Time flies when you've been hanging out with friends from out of town and working on your thesis. I've been falling behind on even making the easy content. Uh, but I'm playing catch up today and I've got some pretty sick books uh, in the mix for you. So let me just grab the first four off the shelf. Um, well, I think we've got a mix. Two and two. Two I know well, two not so well. So, to start things off, uh, let's go. Functions of one complex variable. Probably a book that's not unfamiliar to most of you. So, this is a book that um, works both for a, uh, a first course in complex analysis, but this was actually the basis for my uh, second course in complex analysis. So, if you remember, I think it was in the last video I talked about the book on complex analysis I didn't really like uh, so much. That was like in my undergrad, my first course on complex. And uh, this is one where I had a second course uh, that was focused more on like functional analysis and conformal transformations and function spaces, stuff like that. Um, so yeah, this book I this book I like a lot. I'd recommend getting it because you know it also serves you beyond just an, an intro course. Um, you know, let's just jump right into the table of of contents. Uh, take a look. So you know we do start off pretty basic stuff, right? Field of complex numbers, complex plane, polar representations. Um, so not too crazy. There's even, you know, a uh, review of stuff like metric spaces and, and topology. So if you're rusty on that stuff, uh, you know, the book's got you covered there. Um, and then we start uh, talking about, you know, analytic, uh, uh, analytic functions, you know, power series and how just beautiful that theory is in complex analysis. Uh, Mobius transformations are, are tossed in, you know, they're mentioned early. Uh, then, of course, uh, complex integration, right? We've got, you know, these awesome theorems like Cauchy's theorem and, and stuff about integrating around a pole, you know, speaking of singularities, right? Uh, so there's a lot of interesting stuff to say and do um, with those. And then um, after that, you know, that's maybe where a, a standard sequence in, in introductory complex analysis might end. Um, and then we go on to the second half of the book where, you know, now we start with, um, you know, stuff like, like the maximum principle. Well, actually, I, su I suppose that would be uh, covered in a typical course um, in complex as well. Um, but, you know, then we get on to like compactness and different kinds of convergence. So it's nice you get to do some, you know, analysis with the um, Riemann, uh, Riemann zeta function, gamma function. You know, Riemann map and mapping theorem is, you know, a classic. Um, I don't remember doing this chapter af actually on Run Runge's theorem. Um, Mitake Leffers, yeah, I don't really remember. Must have covered it. Must have covered it. Um, but then another, another, you know, classic, uh, another classic thing is, you know, analytic continuation um, and Riemann surfaces. Uh, my course jumped, I think I, we actually did skip those two chapters, we jumped over to harmonic functions, so doing some basic stuff about, you know, solving uh, differential equations and, and boundary problems, um, which I didn't think I enjoyed, but then I came, I came to these things and it was, uh, um, actually found it more enjoyable than otherwise. And, uh, well, the very tail end of the book I haven't seen, actually that's not true, I needed, um, I needed to draw on this uh, for Little and Great Picard's theorem for random other stuff I was reading. Um, I think there's a sequel to this book as well. Yeah, you know, functions of several complex variables. I could be wrong, um, but I think it, it is a follow-up. This is a book, this is one book I would recommend look, learning complex analysis from. It's really nice. Um, so speaking of, um, here's a nice follow-up. We've got Riemann surfaces. Um, by by Farkas and Craw. This is a book I don't know very well. Um, it's one I would like to read one day, but uh, it's a, it's only really been something of a bit of reference. So I guess uh, oh, this was given to me uh, by my friend uh, Eugene. Um, so thanks uh, thanks for that if you're watching. 
Um, yeah, I guess I guess I can't really go. Um, well, I'll point out the table of contents to you, but I can't tell you much in detail because I've only you know picked this up the few times uh, for reference. You know, but we talk about pretty cool things like abelian varieties. You know, we're getting into um, higher dimensional higher dimensional stuff here. You know, picking up on on harmonic forms and harmonic uh, differentials. Um, Right, compact Riemann surfaces. There's a lot to say about that, and like their their classification of of course uh, Riemann rock theorem. You'd probably expect to appear in this book. Um, uniformization and uh, you know like covering space uh, stuff most likely. Um, here's something that's interesting. You know Hurwitz's theorem. That's something um, I'd really love to go and understand the proof of um, in detail one day. So for me, that's a great excuse to read this book. Um, and of course, theta functions, you know, they're very uh, much connected to the sort of research I'm in. Um, so yeah, I guess that's just a brief overview. Can't tell you too much about this book, but it does seem pretty cool. I would love to read it more in detail one day. Um, another book that's tangentially related to my research that I should uh, definitely check out uh, in more detail, but I have gone to this a few times to um, learn and review some basic group cohomology, uh, is this book, Topological Methods in Galois Representation Theory. Uh, this was another random find, you know, it's not like this is maybe a, a popular well-known book, um, but I just happened to find it on a shelf one day and it sounded really interesting. Um, so I guess the beginning is more just, I don't know if this is the best place to learn it for the first time. Actually, it's not bad. Yeah, there's, there's, there's nice stuff about, you know, abelian um, cohomology of, of groups, you know, even some, some worked examples. Um, and we get right into, you know, you start doing stuff about spectral sequences, which, uh, to be honest, I'm actually not a pro on spectral sequences, so, so this is something I should really go back and, you know, just take a, a day to read and properly digest. Um, but then the, you know, sort of the more interesting thing is this gets on to um, non-abelian cohomology of groups. So already at this point, I don't know much about this, uh, this part of the book, right? I've, I've only really just gone to uh, the first couple chapters um, when I've needed to review some basic, um, you know, abelian group cohomology. So there's a lot of interesting stuff, and of course, um, you know, this has in mind, um, you know, as I just uh, quickly browse over the table of contents here, this has in mind, ultimately, applications to, um, you know, Galois cohomology, you know, like non-abelian um, Galois groups. Um, so that's definitely, you know, a big part of, a big part of Langlands. And actually, okay, there is one part of the book I have spent uh, some time reading and looking at because I cracked it open and I saw art and L functions and the class group, and I thought to myself, wow, that seems really interesting. I want to go and understand that stuff. So I did, um, you know, I went and looked it up a bit, but of course uh, I didn't properly read everything uh, beforehand, so I can't claim to have any deep understanding um, of those sections of the book. Now, this is probably going to be uh, thumbnail time because this is another one of my absolute all-time favorite books. Um, really great for uh, undergrad, um, interested, or, or just advanced, um, advanced high school student, maybe not, but well, there's parts of this book actually, yeah, if you black box certain things, there's parts of this um, book that are more accessible to like more amateurs who maybe have some mathematical post-secondary mathematical education and and are determined to learn more on their own so it's a book all about the mathematical constant uh, gamma uh, one way of defining it is that it's the limit of uh, you know the sum from 1 to the n minus ln n as it goes to infinity. And, you know, it's still an open question whether or not gamma is even uh, a rational number or not. So there's a lot of cool stuff, and it's not just like, okay, it is about the constant gamma, 
but there's a lot of interesting tangential things um, to talk about. There's, you know, there's little, there's interesting quotes uh, peppered all throughout the book, you know, at the beginning of each chapter. Uh, there's a bunch of history, right? So, Chapter one, you're talking about the history of the logarithm, uh, you know, going going through, uh, yeah, taking a sort of his, historical perspective on that. Uh, chapter two is, is when you start, you know, talking about uh, the harmonic series, analyzing some, you know, interesting stuff to, to do with these series, and I, I think probably gamma originally gets defined here. Um, you know, and that sort of continues on in the in the next chapter, starts connecting it to, to prime numbers. Um, but then, you know, zeta functions pop up, and you start talking about, like, you know, the Riemann zeta function um, in this book, which is very uh, uh, interesting. Uh, maybe uh, maybe you don't really start seriously talking about gamma, the, the constant gamma, until chapter 5. Um, of course, there's also the gamma function, which is uh, very much related to the Riemann zeta function and to the constant gamma. Um, and then there's, you know, these these few chapters here are just full of a lot of interesting uh, relations involving the constant gamma and relations between different objects related to gamma. So you really pick up a lot of... Um, other interesting knowledge, of course, you know, geared towards analytic uh, number theory, uh, certainly. Um, yeah, I, I mean, this just keeps going with with all sorts of interesting uh, uh, places where where gamma shows up, um, and uh, where yeah, where what more to even say about it? I mean, just just look, just look at all the stuff, right? Here, chapter thirteen. Um, you know, sort of turns things back and and uh, tries to talk about maybe more real world um, applications and how gamma pops up there, which is pretty interesting. Um, and eventually, later in the book, as you can see, it turns back around towards an analysis of prime numbers, um, which actually culminates in this chapter here, which is actually all about the Riemann zeta um, function and and the. Uh, Riemann hypothesis. So I actually think this is a great book. Maybe I should have said this right at the beginning, but it's also a good book to learn um, about the Riemann hypothesis from. Uh, it's it's got like a good explanation of you know why it's connected, why the zeros are connected to the um, uh, to the to the the zeros of the zeta function are con uh, connected to the distribution of primes. There's a pretty nice um, explanation of it in there. And uh, again, not not the place where you're going to, you know, start doing serious work, uh, learning from this book. You know, it's not a proper textbook, but it's a really nice overview. Highly recommend it. Um, probably just do one more today, because the next one's big. So maybe I'll keep this video somewhat shorter. And uh, we'll discuss another absolute classic, absolute classic. If you're interested in algebraic number theory, um, well, you should probably get yourself a book called Algebraic Number Theory by uh, Neukirch. I think I hope I'm saying that correctly. Uh, look at look at this bad boy. Uh, he thick. He real thick. Um, uh, amazing. You love to see it. Uh, this is a great book. Um, it was a reference for me in my most, um, you know, uh, I took a algebraic number theory course. is the the last course I'll ever have to take um, in theory. So I definitely use this book a lot for reference there. You know, I also learned, you know, I think uh, like infinite Galois theory for the first time from this book. So uh, where are we here? Where are we here? Uh, yeah, so so let's just dive right into the table of contents. I should say, um, as you know, I've looked at this book for certain things as more of a beginner. Maybe not ideal. There's certain parts of it I found a little terse, or maybe certain things are left to the exercises that at first I was uncomfortable with. Um, so maybe there's other books you can supplement some of this with if it's your first time. Um, but I don't know, maybe, maybe you have an easier time with that. So, um, anyways, you know, the beginning starts at, uh, you know, pretty typical beginning for like a course on, um, algebraic number theory. 
I mean, it does move pretty quick, right? Already by, by page uh, 28, you're talking about um, Minkowski theory um, and, and the class number, Dirichlet's unit theorem, right? I mean, I mean the whole, <laughs> well, you even go over to one-dimensional schemes, right? So the, the, the whole first chapter pretty quickly moves through all that uh, content, uh, standard content in an um, algebraic number theory course. Um, chapter two, of course, something that's very near and dear to, to my heart is um, all about piadic numbers. Uh, this is a really great chapter, actually, to learn um, uh, about about piadic numbers from, in my opinion. There's uh, just a lot of different facts that are listed here in a short amount of time. Uh, you know, uh, really great uh, to check it out, and you even start talking about you know the the Galois theory of of piadic field extensions, which is awesome. Uh, here is a chapter that I would love. Um, I haven't read enough. I would love to understand this more deeply. So Riemann Rock. Oh, remember we were talking about that in the context of complex analysis not too long ago. Um, it turns out that there's um, a very good analogy. Um, between between like Riemann rock for Riemann surfaces, and you can also reframe it. Um, you know because algebraic number theory, as you might know, has to deal with rings of integers and how primes factor between rings of integers. But if you take the spectrum of that and you do algebraic geometry, now it becomes a geometric question. And so you can reframe all these things from a geometric perspective, and it behaves a lot like the theory of Riemann surfaces. Um, so this chapter gets, gets into that um, and, and certainly goes deeper into the subject uh, than I've learned it um, in, that, in that sense, right? So very interesting stuff. Uh, then we got to get on to abstract uh, class field theory. So this actually begins with, um, right, infinite Galois theory. So uh, that, you know, that's where I first learned it from and uh, starts talking about, um, you know, a bunch of the stuff is actually like group cohomology and module theory, and it approaches class field theory from that perspective. Uh, you also get, you know, these two chapters, both on uh, local class field theory and global class field theory. So, um, well, to be really fancy, this is, you know, kind of Langlands, uh, Langlands in dimension one, right? Local and global Langlands in, in dimension one. And um, you then even get into um, some analytic number theory, right? Because these subjects aren't totally divorced. So um, you're then able to, to connect it to all these interesting things. Of course, there's the Riemann zeta function again, theta series. Is, <laughs> we've both seen those come up in, in various uh, books earlier today. And, you know, oh, even stuff like, you know, Heka L series, Art and L series, um, good stuff like that. So, uh, fantastic book if you think at all you're interested in algebraic number theory. Um, clearly, you know, I don't remember how much this goes for, but it's a big book. So, you know, probably if you're, if you're like me and you like books, I think it's a worthy investment. Uh, so, yeah. Yeah, hopefully um, I'll be less slow. Bumping out more videos soon.